and it may be a tougher time for players in the aviation sector as airlines and employees disagree over salaries and allowances following three months of COVID-19 lockdown and financial losses. Plus, TV Africa's Mary Chinda was at a press conference to address the issue, and this is her report. Barely 30 days after the resumption of flight operations across the country post the COVID-19 lockdown, there are sad tales of job cuts for pilots as well as aviation engineers by major airlines such as Airpiece, Asman, Caverton and Bristol Helicopters. Monday, August 3rd. Airpiece sacked at least 70 pilots out of its 3,000 employees and announced a 40% salary cut. This development necessitates this all-important press conference by the National Association of Aircraft Pilots and Engineers. As rendered our members redundant despite assurances by government of support for their businesses in return for the operators not laying off staff. These operators are already running on very lean manpower with disproportionate number of business batteries. A major concern here is not only the seemingly arbitrary displacement of Nigerian staff in favor of foreigners, but the proposed 80% pay cut over the dwindling earnings occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic, which pilots are now rejecting. Bristol helicopters, we actually know for a man to wake up in the morning and you're telling him that his job is no longer there. We know both psychological and economic uh, uh, negativity is going to have our members. The National Association of Aircraft Pilots and Engineers is not alone in this. They have the backings of the leadership of the National Labour Congress. We have a law that says that before you declare redundancy, before you execute redundancy in Nigeria, before you terminate the, the, uh, the, the job of workers, you must do A and B and C. You must inform the union. The union must sit with you and you convince the union that these jobs are redundant. When you have convinced the union, then you will negotiate with the union the terms of this redundancy. Has this been done? It has not been done. And you find airlines waking up and deciding that they are, that they are terminating the jobs of people arbitrarily. An injury to one is an injury to all. This is the common emotion of the National Association of Aircraft Pilots and Engineers as it threatens to embark on an industrial action should its demands not be met. We are giving them two weeks, uh, two weeks for government, uh, uh, relevant government agencies to intervene. Uh, hopefully they will, but if they, uh, if they don't, you know the only thing available to Labour is to withdraw our services. That's what we have to offer. Mary Chinda reporting for Plus TV Africa. Thanks very much to Mary Chinda for that report. And now joining us live is Sam Adilike, a tourism expert and social commentator. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, how ready are we to take that leap um, if we're talking about um, commencing international flights, especially when more countries are experiencing a resurgence of COVID-19 cases? We have to just embrace the reality that um, this is the new normal, as, as we say, as we speak, and then start learning and start adjusting as the days unfold, simply because other parts of the continent are already opening. Uh, for example, you know, Kutonu here, you know, all the diversion of the uh, traffic is now going there. We have many clients that we channel through that border, even though it's officially closed, but it is still open to some people after getting approval from Abuja, and then Kutani is seeing lots of revenue from Nigeria. So I believe that if a country as small as that can allow um, an opening and they can process you know, passengers, then why not a big country like Nigeria? So I believe we are ready if we really want to, to do it. So a lot of people would also argue that you know, we need to take this risk because of the effect that it's having on the tourism sector mm. you know, in Nigeria, and of course maybe in also other parts of um, Africa. Um, do you think that's a good enough reason for us to go all the way? You see, trade and economic boom is a function of mobility. That's transportation, you know, uh, moving goods and services, people moving from place to another. And if we are all stagnant, human beings are naturally are natural nomads. And if we keep, you know, burying our heads in the sand, hoping that there will be a perfect situation, nothing will move. And we've just seen the news and the reports of the sack of the pilots and the other people losing their jobs. It's simply because there is no work to do. 
no body supply, no capacity, you know. So if the, the, the airspace is open and more people are flying, more people are traveling, we have lots of clients saying us that when will the airspace be open? So lots of people are ready to spend, a lot of people are ready to go back home, a lot of people are ready to go back to school, a lot of people are ready to spend money, but then until the economy is open, people will not spend, people will keep losing jobs, you know, and everything will be contracted. So I, I believe that for the economy to really bounce back and for us to really experience the boom and that prosperity and that rebound, we really need to take a giant leap and do it safely as we go along. Yeah, we're going to get into the uh, discussion on uh, sacking of pilots in a bit. But before yeah. that, one of the fears that I believe a lot of people have is with the idea of resurgence of COVID-19 mm -hmm. right when you open up, you know, the um, airlines and give them a permission to fly. Um, do you have any confidence that we can handle that resurgence if that happens? Nigeria has done significantly well in the course or if you look at the historical nature of pandemics like this, um, even though the one we had with the Ebola case was not a pandemic, yeah. but we saw how we were able to handle it. So I believe that for us to have even have the kind of numbers we have in this country, you know, compared to other parts of the world, I believe that we can do it as long as we stick to the rules and we nip such characters, such like the one that happened in Abuja, in which a DSS um, official slabbed another airport, airport official because he was telling him to follow the rules. So as long as we keep speaking up against those that will break the law, we can do it. We can. We have the capacity to. Okay, and then now let's quickly talk about um, pilots being sacked. About mm. 100 airpiece pilots were sacked. Bristol helicopters also mm. fired about 69, I believe. Mm. The NLC has made a call to a couple of these airlines to ensure that they reinstate these pilots. How do you think this will play out? Well, I, I believe this is the time in which the government should step in, the regulators, and speak with the owners of these um, airlines. You, you see, it's, a, it's an issue of cash flow. In the course of these three to four months in which they've not been filling up capacity, these airlines are be spending money on a daily basis maintaining this, 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 um, this aircraft and all that. But then they have to let these people go for various reasons. You know, from what we read, um, uh, non-agreement on, on the, the pay cut and all that. But I see this as something in which the federal government should step in because in other parts of the world, for example, Virgin, for example, yeah. um, Delta, these guys are applying for bailouts. So we have the cash to do this. The federal government announced bailouts for tourism industry about a billion naira or so. Let this money be channeled into these airlines to save them and have these people recalled. You know, we, we, we hear backstories about the fact that, you know, these people are laying off Nigerians and locals and now importing export rates to replace them. And that, that means those, they'll be paying them higher. So that means we're looking at, at the point whereby is it, we're asking, is it really about the money, or is it about ego, or is it about um, not respecting labor laws, or res respecting people that have a second passport than those that have just what Nigerian passports, you know? And there are even people in the industry that, that tell us, our colleagues that tell us, that see, these airlines are spent millions of dollars training these, air pl these, um, uh, these um, pilots Pilot. locally, and now you are laying them off because you cannot agree and come to the, to the negotiating table. So I see what's, what's, what's here, I see, I see ego as play here. The federal government and the regulators should, should step in, bring the pilots and the owners to, 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 to drain board because, you know, some will say, why should I negotiate with my, my employer? You know, this is not a public um, service. This yeah. is a private organization. But these are unusual times. And I think the government should step in so as to save the jobs of these pilots because they also have families. It's, it's a multiplier effect on the economy. And I, I think if that is done, these pilots can be recalled and can move Quick, on. Quickly speak on, um, you mentioned labor laws. Right. I want to get your quick thoughts on what the NLC is trying to do, you know, if that would even be successful. And then second, you know, laws to protect employees in Nigeria, are they in existence at all? Yes, they are. It's all about enforcement. You know, we, we hear stories about um, foreigners, Lebanese, Filipinos, Indians, treating Nigerians not so well in their factories and all that. You know, it's an open secret. But the question is, what is the Minister of Labor and Productivity doing to enforce the labor laws that we have? Nigeria is not, um, is not, is not, is not law deficient. It is about enforcement. It's about, it's about ensuring that the, the, the rights of the workers or the employees are protected. So I think what the NSO is doing at the TUC and other bodies is, is what the Federal Ministry of Labor and Productivity should be doing. So I will encourage the NLC and the CUC, please go the extra mile to ensure, to ensure that 
the rights of these um, employees are protected. And they have even threats in that if they do not recall these gentlemen and women that have been sacked, they will you know, they do what we call picketing, in which they will mobilize themselves to the facilities and nothing will work. Yeah. So I, I also have a feeling that the private owners might want to see reason and have a discussion because they do not want the mass, massive, you know, deployment of human, 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 and, uh, human, <laughs> human resources to all their facilities across the country. So I think that NLC should keep doing what they're doing, but the federal government should play the big brother role. Come on, we're, we're in a pandemic. And don't allow um, people that you are saying social distancing, they should now be protesting again. Then we are working across purposes. So let, let's, let's work together to make, to make this work. Mr. Delike, thank you so much for joining us this thank morning. You. And we thank look you. forward to speaking with you again. All right.